An interesting move in the beverage world. The federal government has approved powdered alcohol labels. The move paves the way for the states to approve the sale of the powder. WSJ's Trip Mickle has the details. Trip, thanks for being there. Thanks for having me. Powdered alcohol, um, bring us up to speed. I always used to like think of alcohol as a liquid and I would drink it. Right, right. Well, there's a, uh, a serial entrepreneur in Arizona who has a you know, self-proclaimed enthusiasm for hiking and backpacking, and he felt like carrying heavy liquid with him when he went uh, on the trail was a bit cumbersome, and uh, you know, hired some scientists to help him develop some something that was lighter and, and came up with powdered alcohol. It's not the first time someone's tried to introduce it, but it's the first time that someone's actually made headway uh, with federal regulators and gotten approval for it. Okay, the, uh, on, on the screen, we're looking now at a, a, a video of the, uh, the creation creator of Palcohol demonstrating how the powdered drink is prepared. Obviously, you can't drink a, a powder. You have to mix it up again. I guess one of the things in the approval process here by, by the government was looking at uh, could this possibly be misused and people make very, very, very strong alcohol, which could hurt them. Correct. I mean, that, that was part of the process. Really, the, the FDA focused on the health, uh, the healthiness, I guess, of the product, quote unquote healthiness, whether or not it posed a health risk and didn't find anything uh, scientifically problematic with it and, and gave it approval. And then it went to uh, the organization that looks at labels and it approved it as well. So the federal government can make uh, recommendations whether things, how, the, how things are labeled and, and whether things can be sold, but it's a patchwork quilt across the U.S. of various different state laws. So what happens now? <coughs> Well, now it's really up to the states as to whether or not this goes to sale, and that's that's going to vary from you know state to state. We've already seen three states pass laws since last year trying to restrict powdered alcohol sales, and a handful of states are weighing restrictions right now as we speak. So that's going to continue to play out in the coming months. So what, one of the things that would seem to me is that this is an interesting space for other entrepreneurs given that weight of, of beverages is, is actually a significant cost when moving them around the country. And, and I've noticed this is a very big country. You have to move things a very long way. Will other people see the cost savings there and move into it, do you think? Well, I don't, I don't think your Budweiser or your Miller Lite is going to taste the same, for example, if all of a sudden they start you know, making it with powdered uh, alcohol and shipping it across the country. I mean, there's a certain amount of fermentation that has to take place with beer and, and the same with most distilled spirits. So I doubt we'll see a major change. I think what we're going to see is a new entrance, entrant that's going to you know, probably pull some people away from traditional alcohol. Okay. Great stuff. Great story. Trip Mickle of the Wall Street Journal. We appreciate your time, sir.